Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 452, Chronic Severe Treatment-Resistant Depression, What You Need to Know. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. I have a couple friends that recently have experienced some serious depressive episodes. One on the leading edge is not what I would call chronic uh, treatment resistant. He hasn't had it that long and it hasn't been that severe and he's just beginning to try treatments, but depression is hard to experience and, and, and it's hard to live with it, it, in a household. If someone is severely depressed, it, it's it, depressive to everybody. Right. And then I have another friend who has what I would call chronic, severe, treatment-resistant depression. He's been depressed for years, seriously, suicidally. He's taken different medicines. He's been hospitalized. He's not finding what he needs to find in order to get better. Mm -hmm. They haven't found it. Uh, so what I know about how this all works is, is talk therapy is recommended as a treatment that has that's efficacious, that does help, mm -hmm. uh, along with SSRIs for mild to chronic depression. And those are the ones that I'm used to dealing with, having patients that have that. That's what most of us experience. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and what most of the people we know they're depressed experience. And they get better. They get better with talk therapy. They get better with an SSRI. They find the right one. Mm -hmm. Not, And we don't know why, but there are different ones, and different ones work for different people. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem with it is if you start taking uh, an SSRI like, like Luvox or Prozac or something, mm -hmm. It takes a couple of weeks before it becomes effective, and then you can measure some improvement. If they decide it's not working, then you have to let it get all out of your system, which mm -hmm. is another couple of weeks where you're yeah. not taking it. And in the meantime, you're still depressed. And then you try another one. And so you may go through two or three different ones it's, to find the right one. And you're already co compromised. You're, you're already, already compromised. frustrated. Yes. You're already, I mean, the, these patients are very frustrated and on the edge of not wanting to live anymore. And that makes it more critical for their psychiatrist and their and their counselor to be right on top of it and give them hope with each new treatment. So we've been we know these folks who have this and we've been dealing with some of these problems ourselves but while we were looking for research about it we found a a, a periodical called Curiosis from Washington U University, and, and we're in St. Louis, so that's our research center. Mm -hmm. And Washington University has been working on new treatments for severe resistant depression. And that's what I thought we should talk about today. Right, absolutely. And be because I didn't know about some of these treatments. Mm -hmm. And some of them are so new, they're not even you know in your pharmacy yet. They will be. Well, one that's been around for a long time, uh, and, and you've seen examples of it in horror films, uh, like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, mm -hmm. is EST or ECT, electroconvulsive mm -hmm. therapy or electroshock therapy. They, they, they zap electricity into your brain. They put electrodes on your brain and, and pop you with electricity. And they used to have to like tie down every segment of your body because the convulsions that you get, electroconvulsive therapy, mm -hmm. It's just like if you're ever scared of sleeping cat and perf and they just spaz. Yeah. Your whole body does that. Right. And they put a rubber thing in your mouth because mm -hmm. you crack your teeth. You're making it I mean, sound lovely. It was horrible. It was terrible. It, it and, was. And what and they're doing is stimulating the production of a lot of neurotransmitters all in at your once. brain. All at once. Big flood of that. And so now it's not that bad. Now it's actually, I, I remember when I was a child, I worked at the, the state mental hospital having to take a patient who was totally out of control in a straitjacket screaming and, and foaming and carrying on with a couple guys muscle him into a car, drive mm -hmm. him over to the clinic mm -hmm. and get shock treatment for him. We brought him back on a pallet in the back of the station wagon. I brought him back by myself because he was out. Uh, mm -hmm. and, but it was it was a one flew of the cuckoo's nest experience for him. 
But didn't you think at the time, because I worked in the state mental hospital too at a different time, um, didn't you think that it was just a way to control them? I thought that. I didn't think it was a way to make them better. I thought it was a way to control them because I was a medical student working there. I didn't really understand it all. To me, it looked like a way to control them, but it wasn't. It was really a way to stimulate their neurotransmitters. I was 17 years old. I didn't know Yeah, anything. well, I was in med school, so it, it meant was something else It was a curiosity to me. to me more than anything else. And uh-huh. It was scary. Yeah. Uh, and But then as I grew up and I learned more and I studied it because I'd seen that experience, what I found out is that now it's done primarily as an outpatient treatment mm-hmm. thing in a doctor's office. Mm-hmm. They, they give you muscle relaxers. They calm you down. They now they only do one do half of the brain. They used to do the whole oh, brain. Yeah, well, that so makes now sense. they do tend to do the non-dominant uh, mm-hmm. hemisphere, and they regulate the amount of, of current that you receive. Mm-hmm. And what you're most likely to see physically, if you're watching somebody who's getting it, is they get tremors in their hands and legs. They but don't get major stay. convulsive. No. It doesn't stay. That's just during the treatment. And the biggest so, side effect is short-term memory loss. Yeah. And short-term could be three to five days. Mm-hmm. But that, that frightens people because they don't know mm-hmm. how to drive home. Somebody has to take them. Mm-hmm. They may not know where they are. They know who they are. But they don't mm-hmm. remember things. Uh, and they worry about, am I going to get my memory back? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, have I lost something? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just scary, the idea of something doing, someone doing something to your brain. Right. And but, that seems scarier than the other treatment. They were talking about using magnets. Yes. Now, magnets aren't as scary as electricity, although they are a force. Right. Magnetic force is a different kind of energy, but it is energy. Right. And it doesn't seem as scary because it doesn't create that that type of, of memory loss. Yeah. So they use a repetitive transcranial stimulator, which is a high-powered magnet. They put magnets on your head mm-hmm. and uh, electromagnets. And they yes. turn the electricity onto the magnet, and it causes current of some kind it's not an electric like shock treatment no it's a magnetic but current. it stimulates your brain cells to fire and your neurons to fire mm-hmm. they don't really know exactly what happens where it happens or why although they're beginning to be mm-hmm. able to track that better but they have seen some people get better from mm-hmm. weeks of this treatment yeah, uh, they- so so it's a possibility it's under study and you can read about it in this magazine but but i was not aware of it mm-hmm. uh and then there's another one called a vagus nerve stimulator. Right. Uh, they that put it under your collarbone. It's a little mm-hmm. battery-operated uh, device. It's on, the that right sends, si- it's on the right side because your vagus comes down like this, dives under here, goes over to your heart. Okay. Mm-hmm. And So, so they put it side. over here under your collarbone, and they leave it. They, they insert it. it, and the battery lasts for 10 years. And every five minutes, night and day, for 10 years, you get an electrical impulse that mostly goes, goes up to back. your brain. Yeah. And again, electricity in the brain causes a stimulation. It's a neural stimulator. And what they found is that the, the people that they've done this with, a, a number of them have experienced real success with that mm-hmm. who had treatment-resistant depressions. One guy they talk about in the article has been symptom-free for over 10 years. Just with, And that was just after having it implanted, that was it. Yeah. They didn't do it. Other, it, it takes, once they put it in you, it takes five to seven months of the traditional therapy that you still try to get mm-hmm. before that begins to work. Mm-hmm. But then after that, you don't need the other therapies, and it seems to be a solution. And that would be amazing for these for these, these folks. Chronic, now they said severe. that it wasn't paid for by insurance or right. Medicare. The, uh, and then FDA is now studying it to see if Medicare should take it on because we have so many old people. The population bubble in the United States is aging, Mm -hmm. and a lot of elderly people get chronically depressed Mm -hmm. as they lose elements of their independence Mm -hmm. and their freedom in their life. Mm -hmm. I I was talking to a guy at church a week or so ago on a walker, standing in an aisle. We were having a dinner, and he was standing there, just standing there, staring around. And I I was sitting at the table next to where he was, and finally I looked at him. I said, did did somebody just park you here? Are you Mm -hmm. lost? Can I help you? And he's like, yes, I... My, I had a stroke, and I can't drive, and my wife brought me to the door and brought me in, and now she's gone to park the car. She's going to come back and get my tray and bring me some food, and, <sighs> and then I'll have dinner. And so I said, well, here, let me help you sit down, and, and we'll talk. And I asked him about He said, I, we just sold my car. And he said it was the hardest thing I can remember. Well, I, it would be hard. When, I mean, just He said, no, I can't that. drive anymore, ever. I don't expect yeah. to drive, but having the car in the driveway meant something to me about who I was. Mm-hmm. And when they took it away— I'm not that man. And and so as more old people mm-hmm. experience things like that, 
they get depressed. That's a more of a reactive depression. Yes, yes. And, but but you can't really change the source but, of the But depression. it's additive as yes. you lose more and more things. If you mm-hmm. lose your independence, if you uh, have to go into a nursing home or a, or a mm-hmm. rehab facility, uh, it just gets harder. I. So if we can find treatments yeah. that, that help. Well, that's part of what we try to do by giving back hormones and keeping people's bodies strong and, and keeping their brains strong. So, uh, well, And there are a couple of new drugs that they're trying. Mm-hmm. Ketamine is one. And mm-hmm. Ketamine is not a new drug, but it's a newly allowed drug for the treatment of depression. Mm-hmm. And as I understand right now, if you if you get ketamine, you have to go to your doctor's office and they do an infusion. I know there are nasal forms of it available, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure how many physicians out there are using ketamine. Well, it's a, it's a uh, very uh, strong narcotic. So... They're cracking down. On, they're cracking down on narcotics, and so therefore the few. I mean, fewer and fewer doctors yeah. are going to write prescriptions for it, or even bring narcotics into their office right. for fear they'll be stolen. Right. And and so it's getting hard to have. You would almost have to go to a university center for that yeah. kind of thing. So, but it, but it's a possibility that you could discuss with your doctor if you have chronic treatment resistant depression. What about this? But what I'm told is the results from a, a treatment of it last about two weeks. So that's not a long-term solution. But if you're suicidal or on the brink of being suicidal, it might give you the break that you need to not mm-hmm. commit suicide. That's right. Then, then there's another one. Rexanolone. Uh, Rexanolone, which uh, I read about it. The article that we read talks about it as a treatment for postpartum depression. Right. But you have you were already aware of this drug for other things. It's a form of a drug called pregnenolone? It's a form of a, yeah. I mean, we use pregnenolone along with testosterone in patients who use up their testosterone too fast or pa- patients who have had head injuries. And so it really helps their, their head injuries. It helps them actually get their lives back with the testosterone. The pregnenolone goes to their brain and calms them down. So this is a... Is a um, non-natural form of allopregnenolone mm-hmm. and they they call it um, a neurosteroid which is there's many neurosteroids and testosterone's one and pre- progesterone's another and 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 estradiol is is another so they're all steroids and they but they go to your brain and they do different things in your brain than they do in the rest of your body so so brexenolone brexenolone just in march of this year uh, approved by the FDA as a treatment for postpartum depression. Right, right, and so and that that will be wonderful because there's a lot of that baby blues and then worse than baby blues. I right. mean, where people lose track of reality and and men get that too. And, I mean, yes, they don't they, get the babies, hus- but they get yeah, postpartum the depression. The fathers get yeah. that, yeah, because they're they're cooped up. Their yeah. their whole life. Well, has their changed. life changes. I mean, as as a counselor, I can tell you there are a lot of relationship issues the first two years after you have a baby mm-hmm. because the, the wife is giving almost all of the energy and attention to the child. Mm-hmm. And even if the husband intellectually understands that mm-hmm. and emotionally embraces that, he still feels less than. And so okay. there are going to be issues that he's going to have to adult his way through. Right. And sometimes they need help with that. Well, then they can't give them this, I don't think, but you can get pregnenolone over the counter yeah. and take pregnenolone as a supplement. So that might help. I wouldn't suggest that for severe depression. But. So we just wanted to have this conversation to make you aware that there are exploratory treatments that they are mm-hmm. finding some relevance for and some benefit to, but they still don't have the answer because it's not a one-size-fits-all experience for chronic treatment-resistant depression. But hopefully, there's hope on the horizon. Thank, Thank you for, you for listening. listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.